comes, guys. Oh my gosh. Corey Wellings and Travis Wyant Serious? are explorers. Yes, that's my first sign too, man. Modern day treasure hunters. I don't think there's anything like it. They are the crick diggers. And just watching them, you can feel their excitement. Want to be part of their journey. <laughs> Normal, everyday people out treasure hunting pretty much and finding something that the historical society or anybody else for that matter has never pulled out of the ground. For the friends from Lonaconing, Maryland, just west of Cumberland, each dig is a time warp. Oh my gosh, yeah, we found some good stuff. They get permission from homeowners and search in yards and privies, old outhouse sites that can be stocked with artifacts. They dig only by hand using buckets and rope. They search in river and creek beds. Blooming fields dairy. Never seen that in my no. life. They've unearthed 6,000 medicine bottles, milk bottles, soda bottles, ink bottles. The colors, shapes, and sizes tell a story about when it was made, how wealthy the owner may have been. Their stash is staggering and includes coins, pottery, cannonballs, belt plates from the Civil War, even old handmade pistols. We got a heck of a collection. Their greatest finds include this, a rare type of Sutler token, Union troop currency from the Civil War. And once we did some research on it, turns out it's the fourth one known to exist in the entire world. A rare old bottle. Around 1910, I'd say. Can go for 500 bucks. Every bottle you find, especially the ones that are super rare, small town bottles, you do a lot of research. They have a Facebook page and YouTube channel and live stream their auctions. Anybody at $4? But only some of the items are up for bid. I never thought would be in the ground, so just every time you go, you, you really never know what you're going to dig out of the ground. And it's really exciting. It's a big adrenaline rush. But we think it's the best thing ever. There ain't nothing like it. There's nothing like it. Tickets to our past, clues about what was, relics that would never be uncovered if not for these two friends in Western Maryland. All right, guys, this pit is officially finished. What's up guys? Crick Diggers coming to you. Uh, let me think for a minute. Friday. Friday morning. Hey guys, I'm out here with my very first uh, YouTube subscriber. Brett. Brett Bittner. From, uh, where you at in Pennsylvania, Brett? Somerset, Pennsylvania. Somerset, PA. Coming down here to join us at, at uh, Double Diamond Ridge today digging. And uh, Chris, who we call Marbles, is going to meet us out here shortly. But thanks for joining us today, Brett. And uh, I'm going to flip you around and show you what we're going to be doing, guys. All right, so you see we're out here at Double Diamond Ridge. I was telling Brett right over there where those trees are leaning is where I dug that old bush mills. Corey pulled a nice crock, um, a nice Ma and Paul's uh, inkwell. Some pretty cool stuff came out from over there. You can see the shelf that I was talking about last time I was here. It runs all the way down through here. We got a big hole up there on top where we pulled some nice stuff. I think that's where the uh, JJ Stump Cumberland Croc came from that you guys seen us dig at the beginning of the year. So we're going to come down right here on this little slope, kind of right on the edge of the shelf, and we're going to open this big area up right here. We're going to looks like fresh undug so me and brett's gonna start chris is gonna be here to join us later on and uh we're gonna see what we can get into guys so stay tuned for the action here we go Guys, check out what just popped out. I think this is like number eight of the year for us. I looked, I seen this piece at first. I was like, dang, that looks like a gun. And I picked it up and looked at it and I seen the handle coming down. That is a gun. Check that out, guys. And this one looks real. It's kind of heavy. I'm going to have to, you know, clean it up a little bit to find out. But there's the stock of it coming back. The, the uh hammer and everything still looks there there's the trigger guard you can kind of see yeah and then uh 
So far, for Brett, he's got a Melanthe Bottling Works from Cumberland, an Amber uh, Great Atlantic Pacific Tea Company, and a Great Seal. And a pistol. Yeah, we're about maybe 20 minutes into it. You can see our hole that we got working on right here. Right underneath these uh, set of roots, you can see like I hit a darker layer right here. And that's the money layer, guys. That's where all the glass is coming from. Chris hadn't quite made it out, but we're gonna keep working. You can see we're gonna take it back up to about right there and down. Hopefully we can get all that done today, but we're just gonna keep working right here and then pushing our way back as we go down and in. See you guys back. Awesome. Guys, I was just cleaning my hole out, just working my way back to bank. First thing I popped out was this weird looking thing. Anybody have any idea what it is? No idea, it's a cross. It's got some things on the back. I just kind of stuck it in the ground right here, maybe for good luck. And then I popped out this bottle here. I thought it was just a uh, mineral water, but check it out. It says buffalo ammonia buffalo ammonia it is machine made cork top probably 1910 1915 pretty cool amber buffalo ammonia check that out i don't know anything about it but another neat find for the creek diggers see you back guys Guys, check out this core, uh, this cool uh, lead pourer that uh, Brett popped out a minute ago. It's got, it looks like both handle pieces, and you would, you would have got your lead down in there, made it liquid, and poured it out. Made your bullets or whatever you were making with that. I ain't real sure, but that's pretty neat. And then I popped out this amber. Uh, syringe glass syringe still got the little cork thing in the back of it it does have the very tip broken off of it but pretty cool find we moved spots we came down a little further than uh where we was at it was a little too much burn stuff you can see we're in a lot higher concentration of glass now a lot more stuff coming out there's brett right beside me We've been digging a couple hours. We just got to this new spot, so we're just getting started on it, but some pretty cool finds. Just wanted to show you those real quick. All right, guys, see you back. Guys, a little update. Uh, Brett just popped this bottle out right here and brought it over to me, asked me if I've ever seen it, which I have not. It says, I, Rokich and Sons, Refined Oils, Brooklyn, New York. You can see it's a uh, blown in mold, probably 1905 to 1910. It's got a star and a crown on the back of it. Pretty cool bottle, man. That is a really neat bottle. See you guys back on the next one. Good deal.
Guys, I just popped this little bottle out and I thought it was one of them Phenolax wipers, but this one's different. It says J. Strohmeyer and Company, Philadelphia, Cyrops and Molasses. Anybody ever seen a little tube like that? That's cool. Blown in mold, 1890s to 1905. Pretty neat little uh, med. See you back. Yeah, guys, I just seen this laying in the dirt I raked up. It's a major cement from New York. A little tiny blown and mold. The back side of it says 10 counts. You ever seen that one before? I have. We have dug the major cement, but not this tiny one before. Major cement, New York, 1890s to 1905. See you back. All right, guys, that's going to do it for our uh, digging trip today. I'd say probably the best find is this little uh, pistol. You can see I've got some of the chunky rust stuff off of it now, so you can definitely see it's a pistol. Pretty cool one, too. You can see uh, part of the revolver. You can see the hammer right here. It's pretty heavy. It's got some kind of... Uh, rusted plate thing on it on this side of it but definitely looks like a pistol looks like a real pistol but we'll find out you seen the uh, little syringe and then i got this little teeny tiny thing here it actually has a applicator inside of it pretty neat little applicator you seen the major cement that little teeny tiny thing also has an applicator inside of it. I got a Scott's Emulsion and Melamphy Bottling Works Soda from Cumberland. This one's a, this one I've never dug before. This is a F.W. DeVoe and Company, New York. I think it's some kind of a hair tonic or something. This is another one I've never dug before. You guys seen a little earlier. J. Strohmeyer and Company, Philadelphia. Syrup. I think it's supposed to say syrup. It's supposed to say syrup and molasses. But it says syrops and molasses. Pretty cool. I did get a uh, little opium vial, a little blown and mold opium vial, flared lip, a nice piece of a whimsical cane in like a teal color. It's got swirls all through it, you can see. Pretty neat. I did get a uh, nice little iron stone cup with the handle. I got two baby doll heads, three stoppers baby doll body that actually goes to one of those heads i got a coca-cola bottling works from cumberland you seen the buffalo ammonia earlier that monster monster piece of a demi and then the uh, spoon for pouring the uh, hot lead me and brad are whipped you can see his hole right beside mine wasn't a too hot of a day today did you have fun man Heck yeah, brother. Well, I guess we're going to get cleaned up, guys. And uh, pack up and get out of here. Hope you enjoyed the uh, adventure out at Double Diamond Ridge. We ain't been here for a while. Did pretty decent today. You can see it's real, real grown up. You can't hardly even see that it's a dump anymore. I mean, it's if you were to walk in here and not know what you were doing... You wouldn't be able to tell us it was a dump anymore. But that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. See you next time, guys. And 
another pistol. How about that? Up against the property line, backyard, all the way in the corner of the property right now. Uh, the house dates around 1850s, maybe a little earlier. It was an old mining house. Uh, a lot of the time in our area, you always got you always want to get used to your area because they kind of do the same, they practice the same stuff in that area. A lot of the people would have put the outhouse in the same exact place on every yard. They would have all practiced the same location placement. But you always want to get your back fence line. I'll usually go straight to the back of the fence and I'll work my way to the house. Some people do it opposite. They start property lines and they'll work their way to the back of the fence. But I like to go all the way to the back, start in. Um, when you think you found a privy, it's probably gonna look something like this. I mean real soft. Sometimes they're not real soft. We run into a lot of rocks up here in the mountains, so the probe doesn't always go in the pit right away because they filled them with rocks at the top. But the pit's going to be soft. It's going to have a real nice sloppy sample on it. If you're hitting clay on your tip, it's probably, it could be a pit, but it's probably shallow. When you get the slop and the, bat, the black, uh, sometimes it even smells. Uh, that's probably an outhouse. After you find it, you think you found one, then you want to find walls because all your outhouses had some kind of wall, whether it was wood, stone, or brick. Um, brick's always easy to find because you get a little, you get a red sample on the tip of your probe, and obviously that's brick. Now, stone and wood, a little harder sometimes. All you got to do is feel for the difference in the uh, in the ground whenever you put your probe in. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm gonna put my probe in at an angle enough to where I'm not gonna hit any bottles because what happens is all the bottles get packed up against the sides a lot of the time from the splash. And some pits won't have any bottles in the bottom at all and they'll all be up against the wall. So you really gotta be careful doing this. But all you do is get at a really, really sharp angle and just push it in about center pit that's probably my wall right there I've already hit a stone that would most likely be my wall now to mark that wall you just put your finger where the probes in the ground come back and move it back forward where your fingers at so you walk my wall it's almost right at the fence line up here there's my first wall then you go to the side find your second wall once again angle that is probably my second wall. So right around in here, second wall. So we already got a corner laid out. Let's start. Then you find the back wall. There it is. Got right back in here. There's our third wall. Some people, after they found three, start digging. Let's find them all. All right, now for the fourth wall. That might be fun. Right there, fourth wall, stone. And about up in here around where the tree is at. It's in perfect line with this tree. So now we have what we know is going to be a pretty big outhouse. Um, all the walls found, that's how you do it. That's it. It's a lot harder than it looks. When me and Trav first put our hands on a probe, we had no clue what we were doing. And we felt like idiots at first. We probably dug, oh my gosh, how many holes did we dig that weren't privy? beginning a lot. A whole lot, That's yeah. Part of it. It's part of learning. If you go into a yard, just try to make it neat. Poking test holes is a must. You gotta do it sometimes or you'll never know what's in the ground. Just make sure the property owner is cool with everything. Um, cut grass plugs. 
used tarp, buckets, trash cans, whatever. But yeah, that's it. That's fine in an outhouse right there. Simple as that. And now we're going to proceed to open this thing up and see what's in it, guys. We'll see you back as soon as something cool pops out. Thanks for that little tutorial, Corey Wellens. See you guys back. Yeah, I was just showing that pistol that I dug with uh, Brett on Friday. I got it cleaned up a little bit. I've been slowly, slowly chipping at the uh, little pieces of rust to get them off. You can see it's got the hammer on it. I don't know if this was a toy or not, but it's got a separation right there in the uh, stock. It is a heavy. A lot heavier than what I've dug toy wise but I'm not, I don't know enough about these it is kind of on the smaller side I can't get my finger even inside the trigger to pull it so if it was real it was really small but check that out it's got some nice detail on it it should come out nice out of the electrolysis machine it looks like it has some really good uh, iron still left with it but just wanted to show you guys that really cool find number eight for the year all right guys see you on the next adventure out of here